Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and like always, well, not always, but sometimes I'm with my brother, Pastor Morgan. Hey guys. Today we have a very special guest. She is an amazing hunter. She is a Turning Point USA contributor, philanthropist, and was a former cheerleader for Texas Tech. It's my honor and privilege to welcome Kendall Jones. Kendall, thanks so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to get on and yes, talk. Yes, we're so blessed to have you. We know that for you, you were, it was last minute. You're like, okay, I guess I'm doing an interview today, but um, it's a conversation. So we always tell people you can, it's okay. Like you'll share your stuff. We might interrupt you and we talk a lot. So <laughs> we're going to try to let you I share. I don't talk that much. Yeah, it's most of my... <laughs> yeah, I'm the talker of the family. But... I'm just here for the <laughs> testosterone. Oh I'm just my kidding. goodness. I'm <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, that's bad <laughs> yeah. oh so we are going to start with your upbringing so where you were born and what that was like growing up yes i am texas born and Ooh. raised i am in central texas so like uh, Fort Worth area. I grew up in a small town of Cleburne, just like an hour south of Fort Worth. Went to school here, graduated from Cleburne High School in 2013, and went on to cheer at Texas Tech University. Graduated with a business marketing degree in 2017. Awesome. So really, Texas is all <laughs> I got. That's where my roots yep. are. Is that where you are living? You're still living in Texas today? I am. So I'm living um, out on a ranch that we had growing up, which was just mm -hmm. about 20 minutes south of Cleburne. So really back in my hometown. Nice. That's awesome. So growing up, um, a lot of people know you as the hunter, right? Everyone knows Kendall Jones. And the sad thing is there's a lot of people who have given you a lot of hate and, mm -hmm. you know, are bullies and terrible things have been said about you. We'll talk about that a little later, but can you tell us what it was like growing up? When did you first get into hunting and start doing that? Was it always like a family thing or how'd you get into that? Yeah, so I'm an only child, so I was my dad's little boy, my mom's <laughs> little girl, so I kind of got the best of both worlds, and whenever I grew up, my dad was always the one to go hunting and go on all of these hunting trips, and whenever I was eight, at the end of third grade, he wanted to take me to Africa with mm -hmm. him, and so whenever we were going over there, he was like, do you want to hunt? And I was like, ah, I don't know how I feel about it just mm -hmm. yet. Like, I'll just go over there and watch. So he took me over there whenever I was eight years old. It was just me, my mom and him. And as soon as we got over there, I absolutely fell in love with it. And I really wanted to do it for myself. But he was like, Kendall, you told me that <laughs> you didn't really want to do it yet. So I didn't bring a gun for you. So um, I was really upset. I was like, please just let me hunt. Like you can, you can hold the gun and I'll just pull the trigger. I just really want to do it. And he was like, Kendall, that's not how it works. So, um, he promised me that he would take me back over there whenever I was 13. And so I went back over there whenever I was 13 years old. And that's kind of when my hunting adventure started. I grew up playing sports and, um, doing cheerleading. So I was all over the place with uh, those kinds of schedules, going to privates, going to practices and all that. So I didn't have a lot of time to really hunt. Um, but I always knew that it was in my blood. Mm -hmm. So I would go on hunting trips here and there growing up. But whenever my schedule kind of freed up, whenever I was in college is whenever I really got to do hunting mm -hmm. a lot more than I had growing up. Awesome. And then you did, which I've heard, I don't even know a lot about it, but it's called the Big Five and the Dangerous Seven. Can you explain what that is and why you get so much hate for that from people? Yeah, so whenever I was 13, my dad always wanted the biggest and best for me. He thought I could do just anything in the world. So he really wanted to start me on my adventure for a Big Five. And the Big Five is the most dangerous animals in Africa. Mm -hmm. And it's a really huge accomplishment for big game hunters. And that consists of an elephant, a leopard, lion, cape buffalo, and a rhino. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned the dangerous seven it's those five, and then you add on a crocodile and a wow. hippo. Mm. Wow. And so those are the most dangerous animals in mm. Africa. So I started the Big Five whenever I was 13. We went over there for a 10-day trip. 
And then whenever I was 14, we went back over there for a month and a half during the summertime, and I completed the big five by the time I was 14. Wow. That's I heard that the hippo is actually the most dangerous, right? Out of all of them. I heard that they kill the it most is, people or something. That is, yeah, so um, the hippo is the one that kills the most people mm. just because they mm. live in the rivers yeah. and the streams over there in the just ponds, and the ponds, and the villagers will go. Yeah. The the villagers will go over there and clean their clothes and get water and stuff. And so if it, if you're in a hippo's path, it will just trample oh. you. But the most um, aggressive and dangerous is the Cape That's Buffalo. Wild. That's crazy. Yeah, and not to get not to get confused with a water buffalo. Everyone's like, oh, a water buffalo. No, they're they're two different two different species of animals. Mm. And can you explain why? like so many people when they see that right so then you had posted like pictures on Facebook and then when was that when everyone started freaking out I think it was you said when you're 19 and then what did that look like for you yeah so so I hunted it whenever I was 13 and 14 mm -hmm. but whenever I was 19 it was between my freshman and sophomore year of college I went back over there and we were filming it and I was going after the big five again. Mm. And so that's kind of when things started, the media started blowing me up. It's whenever I posted animal, or I posted the lion and the leopard. Oh, wow. um, that's kind of what the media took a hold of and ran with it. But yeah, a lot of people get upset about it, but I think it's because they don't really know the conservation yeah. aspect mm. behind it and um, aren't really educated on what hunting and conservation really is. They see these animals in the Lion King, <laughs> and you're just supposed to think these animals are really yeah. nice and friendly. Yeah. And um, there's been a lot of news and uh, I would like to say fake yeah. news out there yeah. about these animals being endangered. And that is not the case. Mm. And so you you just see a headline saying, Texas Tech cheerleader <laughs> killed endangered species, and that isn't the case yeah. at all. Yeah, what is the conservation aspect? Because, like, we're not big hunters or anything. We we carry guns, but we don't <laughs> hunt. Um, so, yeah, what if someone wanted to get into hunting or something, what is the conservation aspect? Because a lot of people, I hear that, and they're like, oh, why would you kill animals? <laughs> but, I mean, we eat meat, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot that goes into it, but to make it really simple is hunting generates money and that money goes back into research and development and things to really preserve the wildlife species itself. Mm -hmm. So I always say sacrifice one to save mm -hmm. many yeah. because the money generated from hunting goes back to helping save those mm -hmm. animals. And if it wasn't for hunting that wild that wildlife and those um forests and those woods would get there would be no use for mm -hmm. them so people would urbanize them and build on them and then there's nowhere for these animals yeah. to live so i always say sacrifice one to save mm -hmm. many so that um it's just it's a business honestly mm -hmm. like it generates money and it goes back to anti-poaching teams and research on these animals and it really funds to make those wildlife species yeah, thrive. And I think in one of your videos, I think it was for Turning Point USA, you explained like why hunting wasn't like just hurting animals, but it was helping them. And you said it was like $1.6 billion, right? That goes into that or something like that. Yeah. And so that in itself and all these like PETA people are thinking they're doing stuff, but <laughs> they're really not compared to that. But yeah, you were going to say something? And what really, yeah, what really gets, people like they don't know behind it like it's not that you can just fly mm -hmm. over there and just shoot an animal <laughs> that's not how it works you have yeah. licenses you have stamps you have permits and all of these things that you have to get to be able to legally go over there and shoot these mm -hmm. animals and um they have a quota on them so it's not like oh you can just go over there and shoot however yeah. many you want they actually do research and herd numbers and uh herd herd health, like how, how many of the species can survive healthy in this environment. And a lot of these places, they're overpopulated. Mm -hmm. And so whenever overpopulation happens, 
you know, uh, these animals can starve to death. They don't have mm -hmm. the habitat to be able to sustain a healthy yeah. life. So you always have to make sure that where they are living um, is suitable for the amount of animals that are in that mm -hmm. environment. And also the crazy thing is, so we just interviewed someone, his name was Okongo Sampson, and he lived in Africa. And he was saying like, there would be lions that would just kill a whole tribe. And people oh. like, it's so crazy how many people care so much more about a lion, you know, something like them, like passing away, but then they don't care about human life. And that's the thing that makes me really sad. It's like, we do care about the animals. We do like our, do our very best to like take care of them and that's what you guys are doing but then they go to the extreme where it's like right so can you explain that there there are people like bullying you and saying stuff like i hope you die i hope like all this stuff happens to you i hope you get raped and all these crazy things all in the name of love for animals and mm -hmm. yet that's what i think is so ridiculous and crazy about it but can you explain how that was like how you got past all the hate and the bullying and like what that looked like during that time yeah, there was a lot of hate coming on and the amount of messages and comments. I wish you would have died instead of the oh. animal. And it's just mm -hmm. crazy to me that people put more of an emphasis on wildlife life than they do yep. human mm -hmm. life. And I mean, God put these animals on earth yep. for us. They, he put them on earth for us to eat. And that's another thing is... Um, going back to these exotic species, they aren't exotic over in Africa. To us, they are because they don't live in our exactly. wildlife. But over there, that that's just normal life. Mm -hmm. And you said um, a lion will take out an entire tribe. Well, you know, here we have street signs that say like cattle crossing or um, maybe a white tail crossing. But over there, they literally have signs that say lion <laughs> crossing or like hippo mm -hmm. crossing. And so these animals can be detrimental to tribes over there and invading their villages. And it's not, it's like a neighborhood over there is not like a neighborhood mm -hmm. over here. They literally live in huts with no electricity, no running water. And that, I mean, that's in specific yeah. parts of the country, not, not the entire country, but especially ones that are in rural areas. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they put an emphasis on animal lives over human lives and I got so much hate for it and, um, people telling me everything I was doing was wrong. And of course, whenever you have that many people saying that stuff to you, you start to question like, uh, <laughs> but I always brought it back to my faith. I prayed a lot. I, um, I just really asked God to guide me during yeah. that time and he really helped me through it and, um, obviously it made a career out of it for me. So I always like to say if it wasn't for the haters and PETA and all of that, I wouldn't be where I am today. But today it's given me a platform to be able to educate those that maybe don't know much about hunting or what it is. And I really try to get people involved in the outdoors yeah. through it. It's wild to me. Yeah. Like you guys are talking about just the hypocrisy yep. of the left is because, yep. Well, first off, they're they're judging you <laughs> without without even seeing no, and know, understanding you know. like why you do it. You know, they're just like, oh, she's killing animals, <laughs> and and they say they don't want people to judge them, right? Yeah, exactly. For, but first, they're doing that, and then yeah, they're putting um, animal life above human life because Mariah had a stat. I don't know if you found it, but just the amount of abortions, yep, each uh, yeah, each year. Do you have that? Not right now, but yeah, it's just it's just crazy because you think they put so they put human life so like low below animal life, so and low. it's just like how how does that happen, you know? And so, how did you like? What do you try to do when you um since you have that platform? How do you or how are you able to like tell people about this stuff? I know that you're involved with Turning Point USA, right? So, yeah, how do you how do you yeah. communicate that to people? Yeah, I really just try to produce content. And that's one mm. of the things that I am really focusing on this year is more video content and just educating people on what hunting is and um, first time hunters, how they can get involved in the outdoors and really 
I have, I wasn't great at this in the beginning, but why I am hunting, mm -hmm. why I decide to take a certain species and what good it does for the environment and like you were talking about with abortions and then I've heard people claim well we have too many people on this earth like uh -huh. it's population control I mean you can take that back to hunting too we have to control the population of animals and so for people to say hunting is wrong <laughs> well you support abortions yeah, yeah. like we like it, it's so contradicting yeah. and it's so hard to understand and it's just crazy to me that people can not value human life so much and uh, it, it, it's an upsetting yeah. subject yeah. for yeah. sure but um yeah and it's disgusting. yeah so i mean basically it yeah it's disgusting i've seen so many like documentaries yeah. and uh like tv shows about it it's it's crazy the mm -hmm. links people will yeah, go and I for seen, it like videos actually directly talking about you and saying this stuff and they have like all the sad music right for the animals <laughs> and make it very dramatic yeah. and show all this stuff and they don't even once care about you what you're going through or anything and there's people saying stuff so I want to go back to your story and then what happened to you in college with you know your grandparents and your father passing away like no one cares about that right they're like whatever she's fine like let it but they don't care about what you've gone through they're just like the animals. So can you share what happened, uh, right? Your freshman yeah. year um, with your grandfather and then what happened after that? Yeah. Yeah. My freshman year during finals, my uh, grandfather, my dad's dad passed mm -hmm. away. And then my junior year, the first day of school, my grandma, my dad's mom passed away. And then the first day of school, junior spring semester, my dad passed away. Mm -hmm. And so through that time, like three losses in less than three years, and I was super close yeah. to all of them. And the worst part was my on whenever I had to put out there that my dad had passed away, the amount of comments and messages saying you deserve mm -hmm. it. Karma uh. is a B word. And um, like, he got what he was, co he got what was coming for him and you deserve this. I'm glad this happened. Like it got to the point where the online obituary, the comments had to be taken off oh. because so many people were commenting on the online obituary and we even had to have security at the funeral because people were threatening to come and I don't even know do what, but yeah, um, people yeah, are crazy. Yeah. There's no doubt yeah. about it. And uh all because of hunting. Well, exactly <laughs> yeah how was your faith um like impacted during that time did you uh i mean of course you're probably tempted to doubt and stuff but how did you handle that because i know people handle it and deal with it in different ways so through all the loss and then through all the hate like how did you deal with that yeah, I would say my faith definitely got stronger through that time. I always hear about people um, blaming God and asking why and uh, just really doubting the path that he has for you. And I wouldn't say I really went through that. I have always been someone who strongly believes that everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. and that there is a reason that this happened and he has a path for mm -hmm. me, although I don't know what that is. I don't know why it happened. Like I'm not going to say I like this path yeah. at all, like with my dad dying, but I know that there was a reason for mm -hmm. it and it made me stronger. And um, I just really prayed like there was times where I would just be crying all day mm -hmm. I would be laying in my bed I didn't want to go to class but I just always strongly believe that there is a reason that this mm -hmm. happened like although I don't know what that reason was I knew that he was going to guide me and help mm -hmm. me get get through mm -hmm. it amen and I love that because like so many times like you said so many people when those things happen they just get bitter instead of you know getting better instead of you know understanding that God he allows everything for a reason and yeah. we can get mad at sin, right? We can get mad at like, we can get mad at like what's going on. But at the end of the day, people are like, why do bad things happen 
to good people and all this <laughs> stuff. And they're like, first of all, no one's good, right? We all are sinful. We all fall short of the glory of God. But at the same time, we know that throughout like what ever goes on in our life like god is sovereign he is in control of the situations and he loves us and and i think there's this verse in i think it's isaiah 51 or isaiah 58 1 or something like that i'll have to look for it but it says so many people they don't understand why the good die young and often before their time but they don't realize that god is sparing them from the wrath to come so so many times like that's what i've always i'm like why do these people die like why does this happen god And we don't know, like, we don't know what God is doing, like sparing them. And especially when like they know the Lord, that gives you even more faith and like hope that, you know, you'll see your dad one day again. And, and so that's what gives us peace throughout all of it. And, and that's where just encouragement for people is like, like what you've done with it. You haven't shrunk back and been like, oh no, I'm just going to stop. I'm not going to be part of like all this. You're like, no, I'm going to fight harder. I'm going to stand for truth. And I'm not going to shrink back like God has given you a platform and you're going to use it. So Mm -hmm. we're thankful that you're doing that. And yeah, we're thankful that you are able to be a voice for so many people. Mm -hmm. And also like it talks about, I think it's in, um, I think it's Proverbs 31, 8, where it talks about to defend those who can't defend themselves and like a voice for those who are being crushed, Mm -hmm. right? And that's why we're thankful for what you do at Mm -hmm. any point and all that. So what are... um, well, thank yeah, you. But what are some other things that um, maybe you would share with the listeners of like encouragement to go out there and, you know, to stand for truth or to go out there and do what God's created you to do? And what would you say to the people like that? Yeah, one one of the most asked questions or um, asked encouragement mm-hmm. from people is how do I deal with hate? Yep. Mm-hmm. And he, I have, and I even have like dads message me about mm-hmm. their little girls or little boys that are like, I have a daughter who went hunting for the first time. She got her first buck, and people at school are making fun of her. Mm-hmm. And now she doesn't want to do it anymore. How do I go about that? And mm-hmm just being bullied and girls on social media who will post about hunting pictures. And I think girls are really a target, especially Mm -hmm. in the hunting community, because it's always been known as like a boy thing to do. Um, And I always tell those people know why you are doing what you're doing, Mm -hmm. have your why, have your facts, have a reason that you're doing it and who cares what anyone else thinks if you but like you don't have to, I mean my shirt is free thinker mm-hmm. you don't have to believe what everyone else is telling you think for yourself like if yeah. you enjoy doing what you're doing and if you know your why and if you have a good heart and mindset behind it then who cares what other people think those that those that judge you without even knowing you yeah. mm-hmm. says more about them than it does you because why are you going to why would someone go out there and attack someone that they have no like I have so many people that attack me that have not met me not ever said a word to me don't know who Kendall really is why would I let them define who I am whenever I know who I am and I have lived my whole life knowing who I am Mm -hmm. and then one person says something and why would that make, why would that push me back? Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't I go out and try to educate them and get them to maybe have a little more understanding on why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I always say they don't have to agree with me, but I want them to know my side of it as well. Amen. And I love that because like, You've said this before, too, and I love my dad says all the time. He's like, we can agree to disagree, but for them, they can't, right? They're just like, no, like they say like tolerance and oh that, but they force you to think and believe what they believe and do. And we're like, we're not trying to force that upon you, like Mm -hmm. and our beliefs, but they are now trying to force their way into like, you have to be okay with this. You have to. And it's like, we're not saying, right? You're not saying people have to like, do hunting like everyone has to hunt and be a part of it and do that you're just saying like hey don't attack what i'm doing like and that's what i think is funny because for us like we don't really have the time or you know at times even money to be able to hunt but i'm like but i support the hunters because (laughs) i'm thankful for what you do i'm thankful for it and there's people Mm. who are you know leaders or they're 
the supporters of leaders or, Mm -hmm. you know, or followers of leaders. But so many times people, I think they just want to say, oh, you have to believe exactly what I believe. And I like what you said for young people or just anyone in general to know why you're doing Mm -hmm. what you do. And for us as Christians, right, what do we have to stand for truth? The Bible. We have the word of God. And so they don't have the truth, right? So so many times we can get mad at them, but I'm like, the sad thing with them is like, they don't have the word of God. They don't have the truth. So of course they're going to think, oh, poor animals and don't understand human life. But um, that's why I love like the Bible. It defends exactly what you're doing. Like everything, right? I want to tell people, everything Kendall Jones is doing is backed up by scripture. But everything that these people on the left and PETA and all of them are doing is not backed up mm-hmm. in scripture. And that's what we can say about it. So uh, yeah, I'm I think just, that's, oh sorry God, to sorry, stop good. you, but I think that's an important point. Yeah. And you said that too, mm-hmm. is not just do it because, hey, you want to do it. But like you said, you have the right head about you, right? Amen. And then you're, you know, making sure that it lines up with your beliefs and everything yeah. and with not just your beliefs, because our beliefs can be weird, but it lines up with the Bible too. Amen. And because, you know, like some people could take that real quick and say, yeah, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. And, you know, that's not what you were saying. And and so I like that to where we make sure that everything we do is for the glory of God. And that it's not just because, sure. yeah, it's not just like our desire and just that. But as we draw closer to God, then our desires and the things we do will be in line with him. So, yeah, Amen. I really like how you said that. Exactly. So I was going to read some verses. Um, why what you do? It is biblical. <laughs> so um, the first thing we have is um, Genesis 9.3. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. So, right, people are like, well, just change your diet and don't like like eating meat. And we're like, no, actually, <laughs> that's probably why a lot of people's brains aren't. <laughs> yeah. I think it's so crazy. Uh, like, there's no possible way to be a 100% vegan. Mm-mm. Because if you think about it, okay, vegans don't want anything that harms the animals. They don't want byproducts or any of that. But... Mm-hmm. What about the home you live in? Mm-hmm. What did that used to be? Yep, mm-hmm. Exactly. What about where all where do all of your plants come from? Oh, from farmers. Mm-hmm. Well, farmers have to protect their crops, and especially here in Texas, mm-hmm. we have a feral hog problem where they go and destroy all the crops. So the farmers mm-hmm. have to kill those pigs yep. so that their crops thrive. Mm-hmm. There's yep. just no possible way to be an absolute vegan. Mm-hmm. So it's just absolutely crazy to me but that (laughs) verse that you read yeah the verse that you read i have a pastor friend um his name is brad clay and Mm -hmm. he was one of the ones that really helped me with my faith and um really after my dad died is Mm -hmm. whenever i got super into it i didn't grow up going to church every Mm -hmm. sunday i always knew i believed in god but i never like really practiced Mm -hmm. and i would go to vacation bible school or i would go with my grandparents but um college is whenever i really got involved Mm -hmm. with it we had an online campus that um i would go to every tuesday night called raider church and then I met Brad a month after my dad died and he had been a youth pastor for 15 years. And so I was always one that didn't really want to ask questions because I didn't want to sound dumb. Mm -hmm. And, but he made it really easy to talk to. And I asked him the crazy (laughs) amount of questions from stupid questions that I probably should have known, but I didn't to very in-depth questions that he was like, yeah, this is going to be hard to understand. Mm -hmm. But um, he is the one that anytime I have someone that comes at me with, oh, you can't believe in God and hunt. Hmm. I'm like, Brad, help me. What do I say <laughs> back to him? And that, that Bible verse is one that yeah. um, we use a lot. Yeah. And people are like, well, that's not what he meant. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it literally says it right exactly. there. In yeah. eye. And one of the other ones is Jesus gave a quail mm-hmm. for the, uh, the Israel. disciples. Was it? it I can't remember mm-hmm. the exact um, quote. I have it written down in my notes somewhere. But he always made a good point is God could have literally given anything 
to feed the the disciples or the village yeah, or whatever it was, it was so. that he mm. was doing. Yeah. It's around the and time of the manna too. Right? Yeah. Yep, he, he gave he he gave he gave a bird. Mm. Like he could have given anything, but he gave me mm. and an animal. And so um I always like going in and reading mm. those Bible verses to assure yeah. mm-hmm. like to validate what I'm doing yeah, as well. Exactly. And also it talks about in um Acts um ten thirteen and it says, And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Because before, right, they couldn't eat certain things because of mm-hmm. the law and all that stuff. But he was saying right there that, hey, like this meat before you, you're allowed to eat, right? Mm-hmm. We're not under the law where people are like, oh, you can't have pig and all this stuff. And I'm like, so that's where so many people, they like freak out and get mad. But we need to understand too that in the garden and with everything, like God gave them, gave us like authority over the animals and for us to have, not just to, not just to enjoy, right? Like people, it talks about, is it, where is that? Is it Proverbs or Psalms? I don't even know, but I didn't look it up, but it was talking about how like with your animals, you're supposed to be like gentle with them and stuff like that, which makes sense. Like, I mean, we, you have dogs and you love them and take care of them. And so there are things where people are like, oh, I don't understand how you can be okay with dogs, but then this, and it's just, it's just so funny because so many people like they have their little things, but First of all, I don't think dogs taste good, so that wouldn't be good. <laughs> but I think that you never had it though. <laughs> okay, I'm just I don't want to try. <laughs> but I think that also just with everything going on, just going back to scripture with everything and just saying, "Hey, like like when you did with your pastor, like to check to make sure." I love that, and I love when you said too, like when starting off, you're like, "Oh man, I felt like that was like a dumb question or that was stupid." But I love that in Christianity, there's no like dumb questions or I I tell people who are like newly saved and uh, starting the podcast, there's a lot of people who have like come out of different things and they feel like at first like, oh man, like kind of embarrassed because you guys know all this and I don't. I'm like, I've been saved like my whole life supposedly, but mainly I was religious growing up. I was, me and Morgan are pastor's kids, but then it was cool because what I realized is it can't just be the religion of Christianity that saves you. It's a relationship with God. It's that intimacy, like asking questions sometimes like, and I always tell people, I'm like, I don't know the right answers. Like people ask me stuff and I'm like, I don't know, but I'll get back to you because I know that it's in the word of God somewhere. Like, I don't know where it is yet, but I'll find it and get back to you. And just humbling yourself before people. It's like, I don't have all the answers, but I know God does. So um, I'll get back to you and just being humble and not like stuck up, like acting like, oh yeah, I know everything. And so just encouragement to everyone yeah. out there. If you guys feel like, oh, well I would want to like, you know, you know, follow Christ and read the Bible, but I'm just embarrassed. But just see Kendall Jones, she just humbled herself. She doesn't know everything. So <laughs> everyone else out there can humble themselves and say, Hey, like just ask the questions, whether you think they're dumb or not, cause they're not to God. So mm-hmm. for sure. And I would say, like, find someone that you can confide in. And, I mean, I used to try and, like, Google stuff all the time, like, try to figure it out for myself. And Mm -hmm. you can't. Like, talk to someone who knows Mm -hmm. it, and you can have a conversation and really learn more Mm -hmm. that way and get a better understanding. And, like I said, there's no dumb questions. Like, um, I was talking to Brad one time, like I really wanted to start a series on how to even get involved with the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I know that there's people out there that don't even know what the numbers mean. Like what, like John 3, 16, what does the three and 16 mean? Like, I know that there's people out there that don't know that. And, um, Like, I would be embarrassed to ask the question as well. But through asking all of my questions, I have learned so much, way more than I knew before. So I don't regret it. So ask this question. Because you had to do that right hunting. It wasn't like, oh, your dad just, you know, gave you a gun and just pull the trigger. And it was so easy. Like, it took time. Mm. It took humbling yourself. It took practice. And it's the same thing, Christianity. That's why I love the discipline of what you do in hunting. Like like you're saying, it wasn't as easy when you thought you were 
young and eight you're like oh dad can i just it, no like your dad understood and right just like your dad cared about you so much our heavenly father cares about us like he will walk us through it the holy spirit is there to guide us and direct us so that's why i just think it's so beautiful that picture like if you're because right your earthly father loved you so much he like did all that stuff for you and the bible says how much oh, more your sure. heavenly father when you ask him Will he not give you a good thing? He's not going to, if you ask for an egg, he's not going to give you a snake, right? So that's where I just think encouragement for people. Because maybe there's a lot of people out there who don't have good dads, right? So then they put the view that they have on their earthly father, they put on God. Hmm. And so that's probably why it was easier for you to like not get bitter after your dad and your grandparents passed away. Because you were like, hey, you understand like you had a good father. So it wasn't like, oh, like. God doesn't care about me. He doesn't love me because you understood the principle of right discipline and, you know, correction and all that. So I just think that's just a good encouragement for those out there that, you know, even if you don't have a good father, Absolutely. God loves you. So. Mm -hmm. um, all right. I have some other questions. Okay. I know we got to wrap it up soon, but let's talk a little bit about the Second Amendment. And mm -hmm. you just did a video, I think, um, I don't know what it was called, but it was you were showing people like um concealed carrying and you had like them in your leggings you're like if you go on a run and i just this is something i'm really passionate i'm not really into hunting like i would be if i had like more time and stuff like i've gone once i didn't get anything so i was like bummer <laughs> i'll give it to the professionals like Kendall. <laughs> but people shouldn't give up right if they really want to pursue that mm -hmm. but um i Absolutely. love to conceal carry like if i don't conceal i like feel basically naked like i need to <laughs> always have yeah. my my gun on me and especially as a woman you know and going to different places it's it's scary to think that they're trying to take away the second amendment and our right to bear arms so can you explain oh and then one other thing i know i'm talking a lot but i love in your video again your humility because you're shooting and you're like see i'm like you're not i'm like you're like i'm like you're like i can't speak today <laughs> you're saying how <laughs> you're not even the best at it and that's why you're gonna have to keep practicing right and be careful because right ammo shortage yeah. and all that but mm -hmm. i love that the humility and the laughter you have and you're always goofing and joking like i don't know you i've never met you in person i just met you now but like just the joy of the lord that you have as your strength yeah. anyway that's why i'm inspired by you and i love watching all your videos so we'll talk about where people can find you well, but thank you. can you share a little bit about the second amendment why you know it is important and why women you know, I think anyone, Morgan too, all of us is good to, to carry. And yeah, that was a weird question. But <laughs> I mean, no, I think that the founding fathers put the bear to, or the right mm -hmm. to bear arms in the constitution Amen. for a reason. Mm -hmm. And once you take away those liberties and you take away those rights, we're never going yeah. to get them mm -hmm. back. So I think it's super important that we are able to keep our guns and I know that there's bad apples out there. In every group, there's bad yep. apples. So why it, we don't have a gun problem. We have a yep, people exactly. problem. And the people that don't know how to handle it or that have mental illnesses that get their hands on one. And one of the things that I cannot stand is people saying, well, we don't have strict gun laws for people to get their hands on a gun. Yes, we do. We have background mm -hmm. checks. Like you can't just go in and get one. Like I, whenever people say we need background checks, I'm like, yeah. we have yeah. them. Like, what do you mean? Like people are always yeah. going to be able to find some kind of fault. And if a bad person is going to be a bad person, no matter what, if you ban guns, that's not going to make a bad person not be able to get their hands mm -hmm. on one. So why take away guns exactly. from good people? The only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy mm -hmm. with a gun. Mm -hmm. And I just think, in like I said, going back, my biggest thing is once you give up your liberty, give up your rights, we're never going to get exactly. those back. So that that's that's my biggest thing is I think it's so important we fight for our rights and fight for our liberties because whenever we let the government come in and take those away, we're not gonna be able to get those back. Look at the countries that exactly. have already done it. Yeah. And I and that's why I'm just so thankful for people like you who they understand that 
also freedom it costs right like you've gotten a lot of hate right now there's the cancel culture culture we were talking about that with isabel brown and we're like it's ridiculous like Mm -hmm. it's insane how you say one thing oh my god a little off or something or it offends someone right we have so many snowflakes walking around so offended and then you're canceled completely Mm -hmm. and that's where i love like you standing up for truth not worrying about whether or not people are going to do that because you're like okay there's always Mm -hmm. people who are going to hate and say stuff but well, you um, got a head start because you were canceled back exa- uh, yeah. five years ago <laughs> Before or something. It was cool. yeah. <laughs> I know. I actually, I actually so spoke funny. at Turning Point SAS this year. I was on a panel with a group of girls, and uh, one of the girls was like, "Kendall, you invented something, didn't you? <laughs> you invented cancel culture because you got canceled back before even that was yeah. a thing. Wow. And nowadays, it seems like every." every week or every day someone knew it's canceled and it's like it doesn't it's not even bad to be canceled anymore it's like um this will blow over next week we'll be fine like people are just canceling people that they disagree Mm -hmm. with and at the end of the day we said it before it's okay to agree to disagree like we don't all have to think alike. Yeah. We don't all have to believe in the same thing. That's what makes it. Yeah, unique. that's true tolerance because yeah. tolerance, though, for uh, people nowadays is like you have to agree with me, yeah. but that's not the real definition of tolerance. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and and that's where I'm just like thankful, too, because um, like you were saying, guns don't kill people, right? People kill people. And especially those people who I think Um, you know, aren't surrendered to the Lord, you know, are going by their feelings. They are letting the enemy speak lies to them and stuff like that. And so I think that it's important not to be like, oh, let's fix it by like what we think is best by like getting rid of guns and stuff. I think really what it is, it's a it's a issue with people not being surrendered to the Lord. Like I even the sad thing is I know a lot of people who say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. And yet they support ab- abortion or all these things. And and so there's so many people like claiming to know Christ, but then do not follow like you, like living out and asking questions like, is this in the word of God? What does God say about this? And and that's why I'm saying like it's good because you are a thinker. You, you do search, right? The Bible talks about being Berean, like the Bereans. And I love that. And um one other thing even with that um was oh man okay lost the verse never mind but the one verse i said about the i think it was isaiah 58 i said it's actually isaiah 57 mm, 1. 57 1 yeah. yes you found that too yeah. <laughs> but um okay so going back though to you you know being with turning point usa as a contributor how did you get involved with that in what does that look like as you like being contributor? I know you're a part of SAS and I, I think I saw that conversation you were with um, Jordan and oh, I forgot. And yes. Aaron. And yeah, I love that. That was a Aaron. really good one. So everyone go check out Turning Point USA. But yeah, how did you get involved with them and what are you doing, you know, with Turning Point? Yeah, so I met Charlie Kirk, who was the founder Mm -hmm. back in 2018. I met him at the NRA convention here in Dallas. And back then, I had no idea what it was. And he was like, I think that your brand would be a really good fit with us. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not political. (laughs) Like, I, I like dabble in politics here and there. But like, that's, I'm not the first person to go be a history teacher or know about the government or anything going on. And he's like, that's exactly what Mm -hmm. we want. (laughs) And, um, yeah. And he was like that we are going after people that don't know politics. They don't know what's going on because we want to educate Mm -hmm. them and bring their audience in to get educated. Mm -hmm. And with you being in the outdoor and 2A community, I think it's really important that they know what's yeah. going on in our government and what bills are trying yeah. to be passed and laws to be passed. And so that's how I met him in 2018. And then he asked me to come speak at YWLS that, that year that was in June. And so from there, we just kind of developed a relationship. I worked here and there. And then whenever they had their ambassador program came on, I came on as an influencer and I went to all of their events. And then this past year, whenever they opened the TPUSA live feed, they Mm -hmm. asked me to come on as a contributor and I'm like, Mm -hmm. what what do I contribute? And 
They just wanted me to bring my input to the live feed and um, write articles for them. And so I really bring in like the hunting outdoor two way side Mm -hmm. and talk about conservation that's going on, Mm -hmm. laws that are being passed, news hits with the hunting um, community. And I actually did one today about a right well that it's an, actually an endangered species that they found dead off of the co- off of the East Coast. And so just kind of bringing in my little mm. niche to Turning Point because mm-hmm. I don't bring – I'm not like one to go in and talk about Pelosi mm-hmm. and yeah. all the stuff, crazy stuff that's going mm-hmm. on in Congress. Like I like it. I want to learn more about it, yeah. but I'm not one to speak on it. Mm-hmm. And I like learning about – it's actually helped me a lot yeah. with hunting and conservation, knowing the laws that are going in, knowing that there was a wolf season in Wisconsin this year, and it was the first time it had been opened in seven years. So yeah. just um, learning about that and bringing my input to the live feed. Yeah, and I was thinking about that, how hunting probably actually really gets you thinking more about mm-hmm. conservation and stuff. Yeah. Because I was like me, you know, I'm not a hunter or anything, but I... I think we're so, um, we're kind of, we're so far from that. Like we eat meat and stuff, mm-hmm. but we don't really know where it comes from or how. Yeah. How it where comes where does yeah. your meat come from? Yeah. And that's another thing is I love talking about, like, I know where my meat comes yeah. from. Uh, yeah. Being a hunter, it's the most organic, pure form of meat you can find straight mm. from the field to the plate. <laughs> So like I know where it comes from. People that eat meat that they buy from the grocery store, they don't know. I'm sure you could find on the packaging where it comes from, but you don't know mm-hmm. what hormones, what mm-hmm. antibiotics, what what they're really doing behind the scenes. Yeah. And so I think hunters have the purest form of meat. Yeah. Great. Now we're going to have to go hunting more again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited. Yeah. We're going to have to show us. So, um also where what are some organizations you also support or things because you are a philanthropist like you help so many people and when you go to africa you're helping people like and just seeing all these different things you're doing you're not just like like a consumer like you give and you you have a heart of giving and i love seeing that in you so what are some things you support and and do with that yeah with my platform I have always been a fan of working with kids. I love Mm -hmm. um, just working with them, helping them, learn with them. And so I have a few different organizations that I work with and a few little fundraisers I do throughout the year. My ultimate goal back in 2014 was to eventually have my own nonprofit Mm -hmm. that benefits kids. And... uh, and I, I think it's so important to help the next generation. If we don't pass on our values to the next generation, our values die out. Yep. So I think it's super important to get involved with kids. And um, one of the ones I do, I do a back to school fundraiser where I buy school supplies for kids that need help in mm-hmm. my local area. And growing up, I loved school supplies. <laughs> I still love office supplies. Like, And I think it's so critical for kids to be able to learn to have the tools to do it so Mm -hmm. um i raise money through either a gofundme that's what i've normally done for the back to school and i go out and buy all of their school supplies Mm -hmm. and not just generic school supplies i get Mm -hmm. all the fun stuff Mm -hmm. that i loved as a kid growing up and we did a hundred backpacks not this past Mm -hmm. year i wasn't able to do it i didn't really know how to do it especially like with covid Mm -hmm. and all of that going on but before we did a hundred backpacks for kids in my community. And then at Christmas time, I do Kindle's Christmas Angels. Hmm. And I have an auction where all of my partners, they donate um, either hunting supplies or just like all the different tools and uh, equipment that I use. I have an auction and we raised, this was the biggest year yet. We raised close to $16,000 and I bought for over a hundred their entire Christmas huh. because I that came from me and my mom growing up I always used to buy Christmas angels mm-hmm. and I know that I was very fortunate growing up my parents always had a big Christmas Santa Claus and it would just break my heart knowing that mm-hmm. kids wake up on Christmas Day the Lord's Day mm-hmm. with nothing to look 
look forward to. And I know gifts and toys, that's like kind of superficial, but for kids, it makes a difference. Mm. And um, knowing the reason for the season. So mm. I... I do the Christmas angel auction. And then another one that I do, I work with Trinity Oaks, which is a nonprofit here in Texas. And they take, it's kind of like a make a wish foundation, Mm -hmm. but since make a wish foundation won't do hunting trips, Mm -hmm. they kind of take over for that. And not only um, like they, they obviously help kids that have illnesses to go on like their dream hunting trip, Mm -hmm. but they also Mm -hmm. are really important with getting kids in the outdoors. So I volunteer and take a group of girls on a turkey hunt every year that have um, never been hunting or want to get in the outdoors or really don't have the opportunity to go much. Mm. I get that I get a group and go down to their ranch and go on a turkey hunt. I'm actually trying to plan it right now. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool what you do. Like, so, And everything that you do, I you do that with like 100% and like full of joy. Like I hmm. just seeing from afar, it's just like clear like, the work ethic you have it's just inspiring to people like me who sometimes just want to be lazy i'm like hmm. look at kendall you know just yeah. kendall's going for it so <laughs> you're inspiring to a lot of girls and yeah. what you do so yeah. well and thank it, you it just i shows, appreciate it it just shows like that giving yeah. really does bring Amen. joy Amen. you know and we're not supposed to that's, just that's give for nice. our, yeah yeah you go ahead that's my biggest thing i love giving yeah. i I love making other people happy Mm -hmm. and that's kind of where my Christmas angel came from. Like I know that this pair of shoes or this Mm -hmm. toy is just going to make a little kid's day. And so, um, I, I just thoroughly enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And one time someone asked me like, what is your ultimate goal? And I was like, well, I want to have a nonprofit and Mm -hmm. be able to do, they were like, but how are you going to make money? Like, how are you going to live? I'm like, well, I don't know that, but I know I want to give all my money away. (laughs) And so they're like, I love, I love your idea and where your heart's at, but you have to make a living for yourself as well. So having to balance both of that, I would just go out and buy for people all the time, but (laughs) they have to bring me back down to reality. I'm like, okay, I like it, but you have to be realistic about it too. Mm -hmm. So, juggling those two and you yeah. kind of get that entrepreneur uh spirit or do you get you get that from your dad more or i mean you get both traits yeah. from your parents yeah but yeah yeah so uh growing up my dad was a huge entrepreneur he oh. always started things and my mom would always help him finish mm-hmm. it because me and my dad i always say i have my dad's insides and my mom's outsides because <laughs> me and her we look like twins. If you haven't seen a picture, we're identical, (laughs) but he was always one that had the ideas and that would start it, but he Mm -hmm. didn't like finishing it. And so my mom would come in and finish it. And so that's kind of my problem too. I have things that I, I have ideas and I start it. I'm just not to the point where I'm good at finishing it yet. So that's one of the things I'm working on. That's what my dad always says. He, he has the ideas and the plans and then he needs us and stuff to help put feet to that plan, you know, mm-hmm. t- to put legs to it or whatever you yeah. say. I, yeah. exactly. I always say I have plan A and I have the idea for C. Mm-hmm. Like I see the beginning and I see the yeah. end, but I'm not good at the middle part. Yeah. I don't know how to get there. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. The people can help you. That. Amen. Yeah. That's why That's I have why different we... parts of the body. Like yep. They do different things. So mm-hmm. we love that. So anything yep. else? I know we're past the time but anything else you'd like to share with our listeners and also where they can um find you but not stalk you because you've had creepers <laughs> we don't you don't need that she carries so it's everyone okay. wants that. i'm guilty i'm guilty of creeping on people too, so it's <laughs> totally fine just don't stalk me in like a weird way exactly. um but you can find me on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm, I'm mostly active on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. I'm starting a lot more video content this year. And so I release a new video every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. Central Time. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm trying to get more subscribers to my YouTube channel. I actually, if you haven't seen it yet, I this past... I guess October, October, November, December, I released the Cody Project. Mm -hmm. It was a six part series of a new episode every other week. And it kind of just tracked, you should watch my documentary and then go into the Cody Project Mm -hmm. because 
that talks about like life on the ranch yeah. after my dad passed away. And so mm. just all that I had to kind of take over and overcome the trials. I mean, there was a lot. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. Taking over what my dad worked his whole life for at 21 was pretty hard. So mm-hmm. I would definitely suggest checking out that series. Yeah, because then they can see where, because I was going to ask you, what are you doing now? But they're going to have to subscribe to your YouTube channel <laughs> yeah. right, to find that out. And they yeah. can also go to um, your website, um, thekendalljones.com, right? And you have like a blog and different um, things you support and they can find your YouTube and all your social media there. So we'll have all that in the description below. So go check that out and subscribe to her YouTube channel. We'll have that below too. Yes, and people, people always ask how they can support me. I do mm-hmm. have merchandise on my website, so okay. that would be great. Yes. I want to come out with new designs, but I need to get rid of some of the inventory I already have. So mm-hmm. if you could buy a t-shirt, yes, that would that'd be great. awesome. <laughs> Hopefully next time if we do an interview again, you'll see us with your merch. So <laughs> yeah, uh, thank, you. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Kendall, for all your time. You've been such a blessing to us and an mm-hmm. encouragement. And um, is it Morgan? Do you want to – Morgan's going to pray for us before we yeah. end just for – all those people who yes. have maybe been bullied or have a lot of hate and who are depressed right now just to be mm-hmm. able to see the light. Like you always say, see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's Jesus and the hope is in the word of God. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah, let's pray. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this conversation we mm-hmm. got to have with Kendall. And uh, thank you, God, that even though we uh, just met her, that mm-hmm. it's just that that bond in the spirit thank you god that um she's a sister in christ and Mm -hmm. thank you for all that the ways that you've been using her for your glory god and that she's been a vessel of honor just ready to be used by you god to Mm -hmm. to bring people joy to shine the light of you jesus and i thank you god that people can clearly see that with through her and uh, even people who try to you know hate on her and everything Mm and try to um just put her down. Thank you, God, that she can keep going, uh, not because of her own strength, but because she relies on you. Thank you, God, for being our rock. And I pray for all those people who are being bullied or uh, maybe canceled, that you would just help them, God, to stand for truth. You know, if they're standing just for things of, of themselves, yeah, that could be canceled. But if it's for truth, God, if it's for what you say, I pray, God, that we would not Uh, back down but that we would stand and that we would do it in an honorable way and uh, i thank you god that you give us the tools to do that thank you god that we can encourage one another and that we can uh, bless each other with things like this and just that communication and i pray god that the content that we put out the things that we do would be all pleasing to you god and that you would show us how we can do that in this day and age and i just pray also god that um You would just give those people peace who are, you know, just concerned with the way things are going in this country and uh, that we wouldn't just hide away, we wouldn't just uh, be fearful, but that we would look to you and that all our anxiety will go away and that instead we'll have that courage because, you know, we know courage is facing our fears and standing up and I pray for those who uh, maybe don't feel like they have a voice, mm-hmm. that you just give them the courage to start speaking. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they can't do that, I pray that they would support people like Kendall. Mm-hmm. And uh, thank you, God, again for this time. Thank you, God, for her sacrificing her time and, and just continuing to encourage us as well. And we love you, God, and we just pray a blessing on uh, all those watching right now. It's in Jesus' my name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. You can also check out our merch in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless. Amen.